What's good, YouTube? We back with another upload on my channel today. Today, we're going to be doing a hot tape on the sides in the back of my boy Felix. Keep in mind that this is the first upload in the new city that I'm in, Tampa, Florida. So I just want to say I appreciate everybody else for tapping in and uh, tuning into my channel. So first things first, we're going to jump right into this video. I'm going to speed through this, but I'm uh, laying down his hair as much as I can. Uh, my client has real coarse hair, so a comb is going to be the best way to make sure everything lays down properly. Now I got my number one guard on, uh, lever, lever all the way closed. I'm going through this thoroughly as well, trying to make sure everything's laid down. You know what I'm saying? Take your time with this, there's nothing to rush to. Especially with a low cut, you always want to make sure it's evened out throughout the whole head. All right, so my client doesn't want any facial hair, so before I even go into touching the fade, I like to knock off the facial hair first, that way I could just get it out the way. Y'all feel free to go back and hit those spots that you just went over uh, on the facial hair part. You know what I'm saying? You never know if you could have left any little piece of hair. You don't want your clients running off with one low hair. You know, and you never know. So it won't hurt. Trust me. Remember, the more you take your time, the better. So I'm putting in my first guideline with my Babylon soft trimmers. Keep in mind when I'm doing, when I'm shaping my, my first line, I'm, I'm kind of taking it at an angle and I'm rounding it off. To me, rounding it off just gives the fake a little bit more definition. It makes it pop more when you come back in and hit it with your lever open. Alright now, so I'm just bolting it out with my skeleton trimmers, and then I'll bolt shave it after. Alright, so now I got my magic wall clips, I'm taking it up about half an inch, I got my lever open all the way. Now I got my one guard on all the way closed. We're going up about half an inch, same process. Notice how I'm always making sure I lay the hair down on my brush. Okay, so now I got my number two guard on all the way closed. I'm trying to knock off as much bulk as I can on the top of that line. All right, so the two guard closed in and cut it enough to knock off that top of that line. So I still see a little bit, uh, a little bit of areas where I can lighten it up. So now I got my 1.5 guard on all the way close. And I'm gonna continue to fade out with that flick out motion. All right, so we still got a little more of that middle line to take out. So I got my one guard back on all the way open and we're just clearing it up now. Try not to take it no higher than what you did for the 1.5 closed. So this right here is the raking method. I usually use this or do this when I'm detailing my fades. Uh, I got my lever all the way open and it, it cuts like a one guard close basically. But I'm really just detailing, uh, clearing up those dark areas. You can see the face starting to clear up and giving us that blur that we want. Alright, 
So throughout this portion of the fade, you'll see me go in and out of my lever open and close. I got my lever all the way closed at the moment. I'm clearing out that bottom line as much as I can without trying to create another. So last step we got our 0.5 guard on and we clearing the rest of the blend up below the one guard open. So the same as the raking method, uh, this is me just trying to clear up those dark areas. I'm using the corner of my blade and really just trying to get that fade blur. Now I'm just detailing my fade as much as possible, going in and out with my lever open, the raking method, just clearing up everything that I can see and know where I can do better at. the most essential tool that I deal with every day in the shop. Uh, this is my razor comb. You'll see me going in and out of my fade. Once again, this is another detail that I use. And it's most common that you'll see in all of my videos. You gotta make sure when you're using this you got a light hand because if you do go too deep you can put a ball spot in their head so you guys gotta be careful. Now for the lining on the back of the ear I got my one guard on with my magic walls clips just trying to make sure everything is even before I line it. So you can see here you use the raking method again. Uh, one thing I want to note off on this is that when you guys are doing this, make sure you're holding their ear down. You don't want to cut your client or anything like that because this is a common area for that and it's easy to do. Now we have the lining. So for the lining, you guys want to make sure you keep that back line as natural as possible because when it grows back, if you do push it in, it's not going to look good.
Keep in mind, I'm only using the corner of my blades in this area. My blade will never be flat. So now we're going to carry on to the back and repeat those same exact steps. So my line is still going to be curved, nothing has changed. Now we bought it out with the skeleton trimmers. For the back part, then you use the shaver just because it's a little bit more sensitive on African American skin and it tends to bump up easier. So same steps for the side. I got my lever open all the way, no guard, and I'm going up about half an inch. Go ahead and put on your one guard all the way closed, going up about half an inch. Some of the spots on the back of the head you may find it harder to take out, so if you find yourself going over it multiple times, then that's okay. Alright, so I got my number two guard on now. I'm aiming for that top line, trying to clear up as much as that boat. So if you see that the two guard is not taking the fade all the way out, go ahead and put back on your one five guard closed and continue with the same steps. I got my one guard on all the way open, clearing up the rest of that middle line. One thing I will tell y'all about fading is that if you don't see direct results, don't get frustrated, you know what I'm saying? Just take your time and be patient with it. It will come along eventually. Just keep following your steps and your guidelines.
still got my number one guard on closed all the way. I'm just taking down some of those overhanging hairs that I see laying out. As y'all seen before, here's the raking method once again. Just trying to clear out those dark areas. Like I said, it runs like a one close all the way, but just another way I detail my fades. Just to get a little bit more of a precise blend, I got my razor comb back out. I'm just working those areas where I see it could be a little bit more cleared up at. So this is the second to last step on the back half of the fade. I got my walls magic clips lever all the way closed. Throughout this portion of the fade, you'll see me move my lever up and down. Uh, the closer I get to that to that half guard mark, you don't want to ever just ball it out the whole bottom line with the lever closed all the way. You want to move it up as if it's a regular fade and you got another guard on there. It's the same. The same rules apply to it. Now for the half guard. I can't stress this enough. Detailing is the most important thing about the whole haircut. I feel like if you don't detail your fade, it's not gonna come out how it should be or how you want it to. So after after my half guard, you're gonna see me um, using my corner cutting. I'll be corner cutting. Uh, using my razor comb the raking method with my fx's just trying to get that fade as blurry as possible just clearing up anything any spaces spots that shouldn't be there any dark spots i may go up a little bit higher than i usually do with the razor comb just to clear up some of those um not patches but dark areas where the one guard closed couldn't pick it up from when i was cutting the hair all the way down
so before every lineup i always put back on the original guard that i took the the length of the top of the hair with back on and i'll go over the edge again you know what i'm saying i'm a, I, I realize i always pick up more hair in that area rather than i do when i'm cutting all around the whole head so it's good to go back in and um try and pick up as much hair as you can to get that edge to lay down as smooth as possible once again we're gonna bring back out the raking method and for the line i ain't gonna lie to for the raking method for the line it, it it really is useful if anything I'll, I'll take the lever down maybe one more than what, it, what i usually do just to get a little bit more close cut but don't go too low because if you go too low you know what i'm saying then you gonna start making lines you don't want to do that on the edge that's a real sensitive area as well especially those corners So this is a great way to make sure the surface of your line is clean. And that way when you coming in here with the edge, it's just real sharp. So I put on, I put on a little bit of Barbasol shaving cream. And then as you see, I put my hot towel on and I'll leave it on for about 30 seconds. So I would suggest everybody to fan, fan their hot towel when it's coming right out of the warmer, because it is very hot and it could burn your client. So. I always like to make sure it's the most comfortable uh, temperature for my client's face. So just make sure you're being careful with that. So now y'all can see I got my um, hand massager on. Just another service that I add. Just giving it a little bit more relaxed feeling. So after I take the towel off, I like to make sure all of the shaving cream is off of my client. Just to make sure it's all cleaned up. That way it's prepped for the blow dry. So this is a uh, line prep spray. Make sure you spray this evenly throughout the whole line, not too much, not too little. This is something that I use to keep the line a little bit more crispier once I come back and line it up. You can already see the results and I just, I just started putting in the first line. So when I'm doing my line, I, I like to start off a little bit slightly off to the, the middle. Then I'll come back to the left and then I'll come back to my right and I'll, I'll meet back in and make sure everything's lined up correctly. Keep in mind when you're preparing the edge, you want to have a light touch when you're going in with that. There's no need to be so harsh on it. You don't want to damage your skin or anything like that. We really just want to make sure everything's even. So for the enhancements, I always put a very light coat. I don't never like to use heavy, heavy coats of enhancements unless it's a client request because some do like the edge dark and some don't, but I always try to keep my naturals. Um, so this is my airbrush and then just make sure you spray it from a distance because the closer you are, the more paint you're going to put on the head and you want it to be dark. You always want to make sure it looks natural.
All right, so now I got my holding spray. I use Trust Me. Uh, once again, spray this from a distance, not too much, not too little throughout the whole hairline. Depending on client maintenance, the line could last up to about three to four days, likely three till you start to see those overhanging hairs and that new growth, but it just depends on the client. So after I spray my hold, I always like to conceal the line with the blow dryer. It just keeps everything in place. Okay, so before I go in and detail with my razor, I like to bring out my skeletons and run, run over the line one more time. Now we're getting those overhanging hairs with my skeletons as well that the clippers come pick up. This is just like the finishing touch on my fade. Just trying to detail it as much as possible. so if you guys like this video please like and subscribe i can't stress that enough hit that subscribe button i really appreciate that i'm glad to be back in the city tampa florida weekly uploads are back looking forward to dropping as much content as i can for y'all so make sure y'all tap in next week with me and stay tuned